welcome to Furious Driving, and today we're in my Alpha 145 Cloverleaf, a year 2000 car, one of the very last of these models actually. And although I've done a couple of jobs on this car over the last few weeks, so the thermostat, the oil service, that kind of thing, uh, I haven't actually driven it all year. It's not been taxed uh, in 2021, I don't think, because um, basically most of last year it was spent having a floor put in it. I did a lot of welding myself during lockdown, and then we spent a lot of time, well, I spent a lot of time waiting for it to be welded, having new um, suspension struts. These are all the usual rust spots on 145s, and it's why there are almost none of them left now. They're a very rare car indeed. Anyway, so I didn't want to be driving it through the snow and the salt and all the bad weather. That was going to be taking my nice new floor out again and mean it needed yet another floor. So it's been off the road. The other reason for that is because it occurred to me, uh, kind of at the end of last year actually, this car hasn't had a cam belt in all the time I've had it. And I've had it, I'm thinking, two years now. I need to go and double check this, but I bought this around Christmas time. And I'm thinking it was just as I was starting this channel, which I think was about two years ago, unless I've been doing this channel a year longer than I thought. Now, I've not done the cam belt on it. The owner previous to me had only bought it to, to sell on, so he had it a short time. Um, he did some welding on it, which I've now redone, obviously. And then before that, it belonged to Alex Duke Motorsport, quite a well-known alpha tuning place down on the south coast. They do a lot of restoration and modification, but they sold it because of the rust, but they bought it because of the engine. So they would passed it on, and I kind of assumed that they'd done a cam belt while they'd had it for some reason. I, by chance, I actually spoke to them on Facebook the other day, and they hadn't. And that means that the cam belt is now at least four years old, I reckon. And these cam belts are a dicey thing on these cars. When they were... The building work going on, I thought the car was making a terrible noise. <laughs> when the car was new, the... Uh timing belt interval was 70,000 miles, and I forget how many years. But anyway, there was a bad batch of belts, and they changed that. They halved it to 35,000 miles, which really is nothing at all. So uh, you have to be kind of cautious with these belts. And there are receipts in this car's folder for 7,000 pounds worth of work. Now bear in mind, this car is worth, well, I paid two grand for it. I reckon it's probably worth about three. That's, that's crazy money, that's just an insanity. Insanity on a stick. Anywho, right, so I'm taking no chances and I decided I wasn't gonna drive it anywhere until I had a new cam belt because it's potentially a time bomb. Every time you turn that key, it's a lottery. Are you gonna be turning the key for the time that makes that belt shred and explode? But that's not a chance I'm willing to take. I've only taxed the car this morning and I've not driven it at all. I've turned it on as little as possible in the intervening weeks. So I'm now going over to an Italian car specialist garage called Go Italia, uh, just outside Maidstone, where Jamie, the owner, actually used to work on my Alphas when I had new Alphas for everyday cars. And he was uh, like trained and apprenticed on alphas of this era so he knows them very well and so he can also check the car out make sure there's nothing else needing to be done so join me again there when we arrive in a few minutes well instantly for you Jamie at Go Italia. This is a 145 Cloverleaf Twin Spark. Uh, we're, today we're going to be doing a time belt change and balance belt change. So we'll be checking everything up as we strip it all down and uh, we'll see how we get on. Now I haven't planned on doing this job myself. I've got the manual to do it and I thought you know, it'd be quite a nice experience to delve into the engine and get it all done. But Jamie's been working on these cars for absolutely years and he worked on my 156 and 159 when he was at a main dealer before setting this place up. So he knows these cars inside out. So it's great to have an extra pair of eyes who knows what they're looking at to go over this car and find any potential faults that I haven't spotted yet. So now down by the spark plugs, everything is clean and dry. Nothing's gonna fall into the cylinders. Did you see me T-Sparks anymore? Still, yeah, still, obviously GTVs, more so, more than anything. Yeah. Um, the odd uh, G GT, um, the oldest sort of stuff. Like sealer that goes in these corners, that's where they always used to leak on these corners. Oh, did people put extra sealer in there? Yeah, you, you, yeah, you literally you just have to put like a little, like a little dog on each corner just to stop it 
the old parts. Bear in mind, this is a twin spark engine, so we have got eight spark plugs in a four cylinder. So when you do the spark plug change, it's not cheap or fun. So basically, the smaller plug of the two, you've got to be very careful with, especially doing them up. And that's where, over the years, a lot of apprentices over tighten them, thinking they're like a standard, sort of standard size plug, and they basically snap off the threaded part, and that obviously remains in the head. And then, obviously, how do you get it out? Just go and get That's basically yeah, it's literally rather just like um, easy out it, like drill into it and then use an easy out to, to take it out. Because in theory, there's no tension on it, so it should just easily wind back out again. Sort of thing, so. <laughs> well, they don't look too bad on the tips, but it's rusty where a bit of water has been sat down the block wells. It's got a bit of damage up here, so something has gone and ground into the side of the engine uh, plastic casing. So someone has bodged a flat-headed screw through this mounting bracket just here, which is not necessarily great. Actually, a mouse got in and went round the side. <laughs> oh, nice. And caused over a thousand pounds worth of damage. Wow. Which is one of the ones that seized. Oh, okay. Five mechanical bolt on right. the lower ca timing cover. Um, and it is absolutely seesawing. So now we've got one of those great things which all us home mechanics absolutely love, or dread I suppose, that one bolt that won't come out that takes as long to undo as the rest of the entire job. One of the uh, casing bolts for the lower timing cover. We've got the timing cover off because it's got a crack in it, um, but the bolt itself is still there. So Jamie is currently battling a stuck rusted bolt. So it's not just us at home have to deal with this thing. What kind of state is that in? Well, it's just starting to go. Oh okay, so it's good timing. So you see how like, it's already fraying. Yeah. So it's, it's, we are getting this just in time then. Yeah, well actually I'll probably rip that. You're ripping. Yeah, that's not good. So it's probably maybe not so much just in time as just slightly over time. So let's hope the cam belt's in better shape than that. So that was the counter-rotating balancer shaft drive belt. Balance belt tensioner, which um, looks usable still. We can still, yeah, it's still serviceable, but right. I feel that'll be getting replaced anyway. We'll replace anyway so DTR post, cylinder one. What does DTR stand for? It's basically top dead centre. So this is a far more precise way of working out where top dead centre is rather than putting your finger into the cylinder while the piston comes up and finding it's about at the top. Also we can actually hear the cam belt creaking a little bit so it shows it's probably not in its first flush of youth. Basically on uh, the inlet shaft, you can see obviously it works just a fraction out on this cam. And on the exhaust cam again, it should be sitting nice and flush inside the actual recess of the cam lock. So that needs just a slight like, adjusting. Yeah, it's not. It's a little, little bit left in it, but not, no, it's not, definitely not a great deal, not a great deal. <laughs> well, there's anything to do with the belt. Obviously the pulleys are all obviously stayed. Obviously the water pump will be placed. The idler, the tensioner, the belt itself. Then the tensioner on the balance belt, the balance belt. So everything, basically everything beyond the time belt covers That's all new. All replaced, yeah. So now I've got this tool on the exhaust cam. See there, you've got a little bit of. So we're just fine tuning the timing on the exhaust from a tiny, tiny bit. Would that have been done for performance at all, putting it out that? that no, that's not? probably either if it's done, they've not, or the way the belt stretched a little bit over time. Oh, okay. Perfectly, you have to be absolutely like sort of cock on. Yeah, there's no kind of mechanical tuning like in an old. You know, well, I suppose sort of there's, a, there's that little bit where you can obviously advance by doing that, you can advance it a little bit. Okay, silly question why do you take the uh, pulleys off? Uh, basically, gain access, you've got to take this trim off here. 
and to gain access to the actual water pump. So oh, okay. it just makes it a little bit easier. The fact that it's only five bolts, it just makes a lot, as you now, you've got so much more room now to... And again, this is why I've got someone like Jamie doing it who can literally do this job blindfolded. I'll be second guessing myself every step of the way, going back and rereading and rereading and rereading the book three or four times, terrified of making a mistake. He could see that the cams were not quite right, just virtually by eye, and knew how to correct them, which I wouldn't have known either. So the car is being infinitely improved, even with just a basic maintenance job. Now, lots of people did say to me, I'm kind of wasting my time doing the thermostat the other day because we're going to have to take the water pump out anyway, but you know. Tough. Very nice new cool until falling on the floor. I'll be able to pick it up. You might not be able to hear this, but it does sound like a tiny, tiny duck when the water pumps. And in. there's a little bit of bit of creak. Creakage and wobbleage. There's a bit of play in the actual shaft, so there's a little bit of knocking. Yeah. It's not just us at home this happens to. Flat edge screw is just sheared off in that bolt bracket. What you need is a heat extraction tool. My favourite thing in the absolute world. Have you got one? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. This is an incorrect bolt that's been kind of wedged in there and has to come out. And it's been about half an hour so far on one bolt. So finally, that bolt gave way. It broke off or it broke out. It came free, whatever the word is. So that's done we can put the car back together there is a broken bracket on the corner of the timing cover uh, it's just a plastic cover basically and the stunt that goes to that is also frozen in there and that also won't come out so it's a very 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 fine bit of thousand bit of paper just a very very slightly smoother clean up the inside of the water pump and the water pump goes back in should just click into place This is an exceptionally tight one. When you've got the cam pulleys back on, they yep. have to be lined up in a particular way at this point? Or, no, you no. basically put it on, like with them slack, and then you basically get it all absolutely spot on, and then you can lock them all out then, and then that way, obviously then it should be absolutely spot on timing-wise, and you'll get the most out of the velocity variable valve timing. Mm. These are all the parts we're using today, Deco stuff, so decent quality going into the engine. And now, the moment of truth. How many years were you at a main dealer for doing this? At a main dealer. So when I left school, so 16, and then I've been doing obviously 11 years on my own, so what's that, you worked it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, long enough, long enough. Long enough, but you, you did apprentice on these, didn't you? Yeah, so first initially on Fiat, and then as soon as we, um, we weren't allowed to have Alpha Mad, so we moved into Maystone, so as soon as we moved to Maystone, we were allowed to have Alpha Mad, and I sort of went on Alpha Mo and stayed with Alpha Mo ever since. So I just basically nip these up. Are these done to a particular torque or are they done to just by feeling? They are, they will be. I'm literally just nipping these now just to both these you get to like the feel of the bolts anyway, so and if you look I'm only holding the ratchet there, I'm oh, not yeah, yeah. no not, lever not torque on it. Just checking that the engine rotates properly, there's no interference and all the timing timing is as it should be. So this is now slackening it down to running tension from the maximum tension on the tensioner at first, if that makes sense. So now the uh, timing locks come out again. That's it, that's, that's it. That's all done, just literally case of just talking up Talk the up five and we're bolts. Done. And then yeah, it'd be literally balanced, but that's quite a nice quick ease. Doing the actual torque, talking down what torque figure are we going for on this? 16. Foot 16 pound. on the 16 newton meters on the um, the little bolts. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's so fragile. Yeah, you don't. Especially as they get older, you don't really. Yeah, it's 
16 feels like too much. I'm going to film every single one of them because if I turn the camera off, one will shear off camera. I don't want to go any further, that's literally, that's as tight as I did go with them. <laughs> now, peace of mind to know you've done all the bolts up. If you just get a bit of a marker on there so you know you've torqued them down, you won't forget, so you know you haven't forgotten. Now, these are 60,000 mile spark plugs, so you shouldn't need to change them more than a couple of times in the car's life. And the plug tips themselves look, look fine, it's just where there's been water sitting in the plug well. They look a bit manky, so we're going to a quick clean up so that they'll be uh, good to go for a few more miles and years, hopefully. And the spark plugs go back in, obviously not going over tight. <laughs> This, bit. this is the balancer belt going back on. You literally line that up, and that's that. And you just got tension, obviously tension. So basically, you have to get it so it's banging the, like in the middle of the two stoppers. Okay. Yeah. And that is the belt on. We'll need to go and find a new one of these lower covers because this has been mangled by something in the past, and this um, bolt hole has been broken by, I guess, the same event. So that's more shopping items for this particular car. So this is the sealant that goes on the corners. Is it just those two by the... Yeah, literally just that. You get a lot of gauge, it will literally cover the whole gasket in sealant, but that's, that's not impressive, they, they notoriously leak. So you've got two, so you've got the head, then you've got the, there's obviously a bit of steps up, obviously it goes around the actual, the, the bearings for the camshafts. So you've got them two main surfaces and then you've got the rock cover so you've got three bits coming all together at one spot. Then we've got the coil pack still going back in. That'll clean up so that well they're nice and clean really. Is the coil pack connectors going back on? So look at getting the air conditioning pump off, which is hidden quite well down inside the engine bay. This is the replacement one. It's used from Clover Breakers. Hopefully the same. <laughs> oh man! Um, yeah, that's what I struggle with. <laughs> so that's why I'm, I'm doing it, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I struggled with, I struggled what with this bolt. And I thought Jamie would have less trouble than I had. It's the classic case of a steel bolt going into aluminium. Yeah, it's, it's a bi-metallic. Yeah, it just basically walls itself. But normally, you like give them a little crack, and they do mm. free off. bolt that I got stuck on first of all is still causing problems. problem. It's bimetallic corrosion, it's aluminium and steel and 20 years on the front of a car up in the rock road salt and road dirt. Hasn't been kind. Okay. See if we can get it off, or he can get it off, from underneath the car. Fingers crossed. The worst thing that could happen at this point would be that bolt shears off. That's a long old bolt and that would be really awkward. Question is how much do I want air conditioning in this car? So it's not seized up inside the body of the, um, the compressor pump. It's actually the thread going into the, the engine. You can feel it twisting and talking, but not undoing. This would be a job for the uh, heat um, induction tool if I brought it with me, but I didn't. So, as there's no coolant in the system right now, we'll take off, so Jamie will take off, that's a wee business, a coolant pipe Royal. next to it, <laughs> the Royal Wee. Jamie will take off a coolant pipe that we can put the old fashioned oxy torch on it and try and heat it enough to free it off. So now there's extreme heat applied to that bolt, now let's try the violence part of it. Oh, 
This is sounding promising. Yes. Now I first tried to tackle this before I had my heat extraction tool and at that time I discovered it was very very difficult to get access to the bolts on the air compressor thing from above the car. It's much much easier to do it like this from underneath and the front of this car is so kind of low and bulbous it's quite hard to do it on a jack. And also because we're doing all the belts at the same time it seemed like a good idea to let it all get done here in the workshop on a ramp. Sometimes it's just easier on a ramp. And here it is. That didn't help, it's a bit of a and he's stuck on the end of the thread. Ah. So one of the impossible bolts is now out of the aircon pump. Now it's the other impossibly stuck bolt on the aircon pump. This is actually proving harder to change a simple pump than it was to do the, uh, the entire cam belt. Just because knackered bolts, which are the scourge of old cars. But we will get there. Uh, it's the Royal Wee again. We will get there. This is moving tight. Feels like it's kind of rusted a little bit on the body of the car. Oh, okay, as well. yeah. So I'm now wondering if maybe these bolts were rusted in place a while ago when the aircon pump actually broke in the first place, and that's why it was left the way it was. Because the way the car had been set up, by the, I don't know who by really, um, instead of having the correct length of drive belt, auxiliary drive belt, around all the different components, including the aircon pump, they just used the shorter one for the non-aircon version of the car, and just bypassed it because the clutch is locked on that old compressor. So I wonder if they just decided it was too much aggro and just left it and that's why it's now a problem here today. The bolt is now up to 123 degrees centigrade. Will it now turn it? It's making some promising cracking noises under the blowtorch. The problem is it's such a long bolt that there's room for it to twist along its length and then snap rather than actually undo. So turning it too far or too forcefully will be a problem. Well, it's off. It got to the point where Jamie said, do you want me to risk breaking it or leave it? And I said, risk breaking it. And of course, it broke. But there are enough other bolts on there we can live with it. And of course now, that thing is too hot to touch because it's been under the uh, blowtorch for so long. Still. So it's almost out, I looked at it. Yeah. I can't touch it, but it is, well, it nearly worked its way out, but didn't quite. That's fortunate. The O-ring we need is still in this one. So it's much easier to put this compressor in from underneath. Well, in fact, only possible is a better way of phrasing that, because there's not room from above. It has to come out from the bottom. That's now going back on again. Three out of four bolts isn't bad, but the thread is damaged in one of the bolts sockets in the bracket that holds the compressor on to the engine so I have to find a new compressor bracket at some point but it's not urgent because it's kind of overkill the number of bolts it's got on there it sounds a bit slack and dodgy but no it's, it'll be okay for a while amazing it's only one bolt that holds the uh, fluid lines onto the um, onto the compressor I'll just show you this quickly this timing cover with all the plastic wear on it we know, or Jamie now thinks this is the wrong timing cover belt for this engine, which is why it's worn and broken in a couple of places. So there's a gap between the timing cover and the engine, which is not correct. Now it's the coolant and we are done, apart from the engine cover and the wheel.
sweetie now. So, post oil change, post thermostat, now post cam belt, and getting that timing just frictionally changed. This engine is absolutely singing. I need to actually drive it a bit now, I barely use it. In the time I've had it, I've hardly used this car. There's always been something needing to be fixed. And now I think we're virtually at the point where there's not much left to be fixed. I did notice though on the ramp today when it was a face light, there is some rust bubbling through that front driver's wing. Which I had not noticed before. It's either a minuscule and I missed it when it was at knee level. Or it's bubbled through the paint very fast indeed and aggressively. Uh, but I do need to go and get this to a body shop and get that front wing looked at pretty quickly. But that's another week or so it's going to be off the road. Right, I'll see you again next time, doing something else.